Welcome to the podcast about investing in startups, where existing investors can learn how to get the best deal possible. And those that have never before invested in startups can learn the keys to success from the venture experts. Your host is Nick Moran, and this is The Full Ratchet. Welcome back to TFR for a special installment of Investor Stories. In this segment, the investors tell a story about some of the most odd and unusual situations they've ever encountered as investors. This is the segment called The Strange and Unusual. On today's special segment, we have David Horowitz of Touchdown Ventures. David, can you tell us a story about the craziest situation or pitch you've encountered in your time as an investor? All right. So I'll give you the story, but I (laughs) I won't name names here. So we had an entrepreneur. This might have been seven or eight years ago uh, when I was at Comcast. An entrepreneur came in to pitch us and actually came up with this, you know, pretty crazy idea to create a new sport and even a sport league. And it had, I remember, it had elements of football and soccer and I think rugby and basketball, maybe even a little lacrosse. It was, it was kind of the best of all those sports. Kind, it was crazy. And so, typically, I think what you'd expect is an entrepreneur come in with this PowerPoint deck. And I, I can't even remember how. I think there was, you know, somebody in our network had referred us to us, so we, we probably not, would not have been one we would have taken seriously. What really made this particular one different is that this entrepreneur didn't just put a PowerPoint deck on his vision. He actually constructed a whole field for this sport, actually hired professional players. You know, I, I don't even know how he got the capital spent, you know, millions of dollars paying these players, building the league. And wow, it was incredible. It was, you know, the admiration I had for trying to make this work was incredible. It was a crazy idea. You kind of had to be there, you know, seeing, you know, seeing this person. And I haven't followed to see whether that, that you know, I don't believe that this, you know, took off. Obviously, the odds of creating a new league is very challenging, but just, you know, it was uh, the admiration I had for this founder of actually trying to make this work and showing, you know, investors, you know, rather than producing a PowerPoint deck was really the, the craziest part of the encounter. Wow. On today's special segment, we have Jim Kim of Builders. Jim, can you tell us a story about the craziest situation or pitch you've encountered? Well, the, the crazy situation was definitely that that founder threatening the CEO issue. And I happened to actually be, <laughs> there, there was a board member from New York, a board member from California. I just happened to be in that particular town at the time. So I got a call from the two other board members and they're like, um, yeah, Jim, are, you're, you're the closest one at this at this time geographically to the company so <laughs> so you go in and fix it <laughs> lucky you jim <laughs> i was like thanks guys really appreciate it um but you know you you figure it out right like you end up working with with the people in the company to just uh to, to make things happen but that that was certainly a massively unique experience you know as far as uh founder founder pitches are concerned you know i i think you know, a lesson for founders is sometimes less is more Right. We're investing in, in you, the entrepreneur, the founder, the CEO. Maybe you want to bring your product person or your technical person, your co-founder with you in a presentation. There's certainly been presentations I've been part of where there are 15 people from that side of the table in the room and there's me. And I'm just like, I, we don't, you don't need to all be here. You guys can, can go focus on building the product and building the company. <laughs> I felt bad, right? Because, you know, I'm taking it's your time. It's an expensive time. meeting. Yeah. It's an expensive meeting. And really, the reason why we're going to invest in, in a company is because of the founders, right? And so we don't necessarily all need to be here at, at our stage of investing, right? At, right. at Series A. So, ho- so hopefully, I mean, you know, bring the people that you need to, to be able to get the story across. But certainly when there were 15 people in the room and me, I was a bit overwhelmed. And I was just kind of, uh, we don't need all this, right? So. <laughs> On today's special segment, we have Ash Rust of Sterling Road. Ash, can you tell us a story about one of the craziest situations that you've encountered as an investor? Well, I think I am the world's lamest investor, so I don't have too many crazy <laughs> stories. Oh, please. One of the things that I've always found most interesting is is what certain 
uh, academics uh, who are starting companies think they might be able to get away with. So when I was doing interviews for accelerator programs, we've had a couple of instances where a professor has come in with their grad students pitching a company. And one in particular, I remember, the grad. it was just the two grad students that showed up in person. The professor was on a video chat. So the grad students come in, dutifully set down a laptop with him on video chat. And then they set up the screen with the presentation and they were doing sort of silent hand movements as he was talking and uh, they were to highlight the various points of the slides that he felt were most important at the end of it you know we get to the obvious question of like we get straight to like obviously you know there's going to be some interesting discussions about who's full-time on this project and so in this particular situation we asked who's full-time and he said nobody is like, okay so uh. what's the plan is like well the two grad students will go full-time if you decide to fund us and then and who's going to be the ceo oh well i'll stay the ceo Okay, well, but you won't be full time. He said, "Well, of course I can't be full time. I'm a I'm a tenured professor." <sighs> yeah, <laughs> so, don't raise venture capital, guys. <laughs> yes, exactly. I felt like we were speaking a different language, but that have I mean, I get. I wish it was a more exciting story, but it just happened. That is a fairly consistent one that I think people who are real geniuses, but don't have maybe and have got incredible ideas <laughs> in, in massive markets, but maybe don't have as much experience on the business side or on the funding side, and maybe haven't done much research into it, right. can just be speaking Dutch in those meetings with you. Right, exactly. You know, something unusual that you and I have actually chatted about is also these, these pitch decks you receive from these quote unquote CFOs. From startups, oh, right? Oh, yes. The interim, <laughs> the acting and interim CFO. Yes. So right. I think that the luminaries of our, of the, and the Twitterati in tech have done a really good job over the last year or so of, of bad mouthing investment bankers <laughs> uh, and tell it, warning everybody far and wide that you do not talk to an investment banker as a mechanism to raise your seed round. And so now what those investment bankers have figured out is that the way to solve that problem is to now come on board as an acting or interim CFO <laughs> and then do the exact same thing. <laughs> but of course, that you know, it's not like the emails have changed or the formatting and the bad spelling and all this kind of stuff, you know, or the the terrible personalization. All of that remains the same. So the warning is, yeah, the same. Please, please don't get let an investment banker try and raise money for you because anybody that works on commission of the money that you raise is just not aligned with yours and the investor's interest. Right. Uh, and that's the problem with the relationship. I wish it were different. And I wish there was, I wish someone would come up with a solution for those kinds of really smart and, and valuable people to help founders without getting commission in that way. But it's just, I haven't, I haven't heard of a good mechanism yet myself. Yeah, Ash, we had to add a pass reason to our CRM that is called Broker Dealer Fake C CFO. <laughs> <laughs> fake CFO as a reason for passing. Yeah, I just I confess I have not bothered to reply to those. You know, the first one you get, you always sort of write, well, you always, I always write the first two or three sentences in a very ranty way where every piece of punctuation is actually a cuss word. But, you know, then I delete those emails and go back to the rest of my life. Oh, yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm not <laughs> suggesting I actually reply to them. I just we track them, you know, yeah, we track along exactly. four major past reasons. And I, yeah, no, you're doing a better job of actually putting it in the CRM. I am. Um, <laughs> I'm just I'm just ranting in my head about it. That will conclude this installment of Investor Stories. If you're enjoying the program and would like to see it continue, take a moment and leave a five star review in iTunes. Also, if you'd like updates on new content from TFR, as well as the top 10 VC articles every week, go to fullratchet.net and sign up for the newsletter. Okay, that will wrap things up for today. Until next time, overprepare, choose carefully, and invest confidently. Thanks for joining me. 